Hey guys, Kevin Cage back with another cryptocurrency update. Welcome to the channel. Like and subscribe if you're serious about the digital asset space. And let's get right into it today. One take and uncut. So before getting into the information, I did want to show you guys this chart in this fractal. This is laid out by Mr. Level Up on Twitter. Again, you can find him on Awake or type in Awake and XRP on YouTube as well. And just showing that this pattern, this fractal, as we can see, is following suit. Now, typically, now whatever you guys believe, whether you believe that we're tied to a lot of the other global markets or you believe that Bitcoin leads the market and there's manipulation and suppression and the altcoins follow Bitcoin doesn't matter. I just want to show you that these patterns in, you know, these fractals do exist to some degree. Now, XLM or Stellar is on the far right here. And then we have Cardano following up next behind the, you know, Stellar behind their price moves. And then we have XRP last but not least on the far left over here. So sorry if it's cut off a bit. And as we can see, XLM had a nice, nice pump, you know, for the whole week. What was it? 20, 30 percent in total. So it kind of finally broke through. It didn't end up having to go as low as XRP. As we can see, XRP really had the dip and follow suit. ADA dipped a little bit more, <clears throat> but relatively XLM didn't have to dip, kind of took off consolidated again and then boom took off again is breaking through almost to seven cents. Now, what we can see here and sorry, I kind of have a, a runny nose at the moment. We can see ADA kind of moved to the same degree and now finally xrp broke through so it's last but not least we should expect 23 cents at time of recording this video we are over 20 and a half cents so i'd like to think granted that there are you know isn't massive dumping on the market or suppression and something really knocks down the market down that will follow suit and hopefully we'll be able to approach and break through well over here and you know the coming days or you know hopefully next week or two we can finally break through and get over and hopefully to that 25 cent mark once again now all it takes is one big move and we could do many bursts so don't get me wrong um and i just want to advise not financial advice do your own research nobody 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 should be trading based off of these patterns or fractals i am showing this for entertainment purposes and to show you that these patterns do exist to some degree all right so this is on the 12 hour so it does take time i'm just saying i believe the uptrend is here and this is for the most part speculative in my opinion i think end of year we'll be getting to see more utility but for the time being this is speculative so we don't know where the base floor is and again that could just as likely come down at any moment all right so what i really wanted to address today guys was you know xrp we know that the payment rails for the most part in ripple net connected with x current and formerly their x series products are all connected i think the groundwork has been laid for the most part now in my opinion with xrp the strategy is this for any coins that are going to solve real problems and yes they're not stable coins they are going to appreciate based on the problems they solve i believe that the plan is keep the price as low as possible for as long as possible until they're 100 percent ready to use it until then there's no need to move the needle whatsoever and that is why i personally am just holding you know holding hodling whatever you want to say hold on for dear life because simply it is just a waiting game and to me i think it's very simple provided you follow the fundamentals all right so let me go to the next point here so again 2018 i'm going to go over this in a future video this is the founder and director of true global ventures talking back about ripple finding its adoption in asia as we know singapore is a hotbed for fintechs just listen to this 20 second clip that people will use ripple for cross-border payments surprises maybe not surprisingly it's in asia that it starts uh, Japan and SPI, which is a huge financial institution, has invested in Ripple itself and has said that they are going to start to use it. So, yes, we are seeing it. But, you know, it took a while and a lot of frustration between that. And I agree. It did take a very long time. A lot of people were saying, OK, we're going to, you know, XRP is going to move when SPI starts using it. And now we're hearing word or conspiracies and ideas. And this is conspiracy that SPI was kind of forced to hold back XRP to let the other big groups catch up build out their payment rails or you know apis whatever that you know it takes to truly connect to the xrpl and yes anything that runs over the xrpl there's only one xrp ledger so please stop spreading fear uncertainty and doubt about all of that topic it is you know simply one open source protocol if it runs over the xrpl it influences xrp there are only you know one group of xrp on the xrp ledger all right so keep that in mind now with xrp used by the banks we've gone over many many blogs in the past a lot of information that is out there explaining how on-demand liquidity works now keep in mind 
typically with these banks, with SWIFT, they're limited by the amount of transactions they can use. And I know I was referencing and sharing a lot of Galgatron with you guys today. I'm not going to be, you know, reading articles per se, but I highly recommend you going to, you know, read some blogs by him, Galgatron.net. And one thing he was referencing was right now we can kind of send one transaction a week, for example. Now that money that's tied up the trillions of dollars is tied up around the globe, pre-funded accounts, and this is what XRP and Ripple and you know other groups are aiming to tackle, is on-demand liquidity. So you don't need those money reserves, those monetary reserves around the globe. Instead of holding 180 fiat currencies pre-funded, you could hypothetically, and maybe not 180 per se, let's just say there's you know 30 that are pre-funded around the globe, you could hypothetically reduce that amount and just hold a small batch of XRP to replace that entirely. Now, instead of transactions happening one time a week, that same money can be reused for potentially thousands of transactions in a week. This is the effects you know, of the global economy, and this will compound everything exponentially. And it's kind of similar to you know what we had with physical mail evolving into email kind of going towards that internet of information, whereas we are going to the internet of value. So again, keep that in mind. I love that analogy. Just, you know, this is literally physical mail to email right now in terms of price increase, guys, liquidity providers. So people talk about, you know, why, you know, what's going to happen. We have custody groups and I'll get into that in a minute. And people say, okay, well, XRP has a burn rate when you are sending transactions on the network. There's a minuscule amount of XRP that is burnt. Of course, that's to prevent DDoS attacks and spam, you know, preventing spamming the network. I get it. But guess what? One thing that people forget is that bur this minuscule, minute burn rate of XRP actually helps the price statistically have a perpetual upward movement. So what happens is it makes these liquidity providers, these market makers that foster liquidity on the network to make XRP cheaper, actually statistically more likely to actually make more money and be more profitable over time. So instead of a 50-50 split and they're, you know, just breaking even the whole time, they're actually incentivized to utilize XRP. Super, super cool, even if they do have losing periods. Now, what I want to emphasize is this. So we have, you know, custodial services right here. So, you know, Fidelity Digital Assets. We'll talk about the difference between PolySign and Standard Custody in the future. These are kind of like giant groups that are safes for cryptocurrency, especially to secure the trillions of dollars that are going to be coming in tokenized assets. Please, I know I'll reference a lot of, you know, State Street and talking. Of course, they own 30% of total global wealth. These are the groups, guys. Everything will be tokenized or digitized to some degree. And yes, they still need to be transferred and interoperable. And there needs to be liquidity between these ecosystems to actually trade effectively. And there also has to be not only liquidity per se, but it has to be a lot more fungible so you can actually exchange it a lot easier. So, okay, we have, for the most part, we have a lot of custodial services coming, but who are going to be the dominant liquidity providers? And I was just kind of asking questions if there's any groups or, you know, well-known market makers we know and companies that will take this role, but guess what? This might actually be taken by a protocol to some degree. So I am Legion, actually, a great researcher in the community. And again, this is why I use Twitter, guys, to communicate and always learn. I'm not going to be arrogant enough to pretend I know everything because this is such a nascent space. So I am Legion actually points this out with IOP, Interledger Protocol. Again, the protocol built in tandem with the Ledger, XRP Ledger, and then the native digital asset, XRP. All three can bring the fruition of the Internet of Value, along with, you know, some smart contract capabilities. All right, so as we can see here, a matter of trust. So essentially, I'm going to just go right here. So large banks today often use a method called payments versus payments through services like CLS. We've talked about them last video, continuous link settlement, which is exactly what the Interledger protocol does as well. A key feature in ILP is the ability to chain these escrow transfers together. This is what turns it from a neat way to connect ledgers into a giant global graph of liquidity. This would be absolutely insane if this were to happen simply since it uses um, kind of like atomic swaps. It basically locks the money in escrow and there's what is it a hash time locked agreement per se. And what happens is you put the money in there and if the timer goes out and they don't you know, accept it and there's the pre images aren't validated, then that money just goes back to the sender. But if it is confirmed and they have proof that they you know, have permission, the money will actually send to them automatically. So this could create 
you know, streaming of payments. This could create true trust and getting rid of all intermediaries. So imagine just a giant global graph of liquidity, a true internet of value where you could exchange anything, you know, tokenized portions of your land of commercial real estate in exchange for maybe, you know, the title of a vehicle, things like that. All right. And it only, you know, it's all or nothing. So there's never going to be a mistake in payments. All right, right here, Thomas Coldcoin told Coindesk, as long as your ledger supports interledger, you can participate in a payment and someone will be able to provide liquidity. It can be PayPal, Alipay, Bitcoin, bank ledgers, or Skype. Any Anywhere people hold balances, they have a ledger. Absolutely fascinating, guys. Absolutely fascinating. All right. And then here I was just reading a little bit about interledger.org again. Just different support, and you can kind of see the payment flows, talking about trust lines, payment channels, etc., various connectors. Thought it was a good read. All right, so this is where I wanted to get into it. If you guys are still with me, props. Now, talking about the real-time payments for all financial institutions, I made that other long video. People go, oh, well, he's talking about RTP, and Kevin doesn't understand that they're not going to use XRP, so I exited the video. That defeats the whole purpose of the point I wanted to bring across. So again, the clearinghouse, guys, and we know this real-time payments platform. I'm not talking about XRP. I'm talking about the connections themselves. This is a domestic use case. As we can see, the technology providers, we've already basically connected a lot of them to the company Ripple, or at least trials with XRP specifically. A few to name, and we'll go over them in the future. Again, is FIS, Finastra, ACI Worldwide. Now, as we come down here, we can see Volante, another group that is integrated with Ripple. So they are one of the many technology providers to help with this RTP system. So let's check it out. And this has been well known for quite some time. Again, Demore Sahami has shared this around and we have all the articles here to base it upon. So right here, Volante document Volpe Ripple processor module speeds integration to the Ripple global settlement network. So we can see here introduction talking about, you know, the challenge that we see today, the solution. And again, you guys can just follow me on Twitter. And I, you know, retweeted this as always. And this is on assets.volantetech.com. Now we can see right here in this document, the Volpe Ripple processor module. So this actually connects right to Ripple Connect, as we can see via API. And now we can see it's essentially X current altogether. FX quotes and rates, you get the payment sent, you get confirmation and payment settlement, all connected between these banks, all right? Now keep in mind Volpe, or I should say Volante, the organization, is completely platform agnostic. They do not have favorites, and yes, they integrate with many groups, but I just wanted to show you the connection is there. So yes, they're integrated with Ripple, they're all connected, should be no surprise. Now this is a cool sheet that again, Demore shared, and again, this is Demore, so D-A-M-0-0-R, must follow guys, has done so much research and he doesn't get credit for it as well. So we can see a data sheet. We can see examples. Um, Volpe as a service. We can go down to, let's see, RTP, real-time payments. We can see Fedwire as a service in open banking and even SEPA. And then what's also really cool is we can see gateways right here. You know, they have payments with Swift GPI as well. So it's happening. And then again, again, right here to the Ripple Global Settlement Network. So they are highly connected, there's no doubt. So not even a question, honestly. Um, right here through Swift GPI, it says representing over $300 billion of daily value. I believe that the payment rails are already connected and laid with Ripple, whether it's just Xcurrent, the, me the messaging standard, and that they're not quite ready to use XRP to replace these dormant accounts. I get it. I just wanted to show you. It's all right here. And Volpe also on their data sheet, they also have different news and migrations and integrations with the new messaging standard, ISO 20022. Okay. All right, next. Now, I wanted to share this, and we'll finish up with this. So, King Solomon, actually, as of April 27, 2020, Volante joins the U.S. Faster Payments Council. Guess what Volante supports? So, we can see right here. <clears throat> we can see right here, just updated, brand new, Faster Payments Council. We also know that Ripple has joined them in the past as well. Should be no surprise. We're just going to actually go to the article. So, Volante Technology joins U.S. Payments Faster Task Force. Excuse me. And now right here, Volante is known as the enabler of the first real-time payments over the clearinghouse RTP network and has been an active participant within the Faster Payments Task Force. All right, talking about, in, you know, internationally helping companies driving, you know, payment modernization, helping banks of all sizes. We can see various groups. Again, enabling the onboarding and services service costs typically associated with connecting to new payment rails. All right, it's all happening in front of our eyes. All right, brand new news. And then right here. This is older as well. 
So we can see Ripple's Pat Thelen, and I believe that's how you pronounce his last name. I'm sorry if it's Thelen, gets an additional job. So Faster Payments Council of U.S. elects Ripple Strategic Accounts VP. And we've shown various clips of Pat talking in the past as well. Just wanted to show you. And essentially, this Faster Payments Council right here, it's an organization comprised by industry leaders that seek to create or facilitate a world-class payment system that can be used and trusted by Americans so they can settle any payment safely, securely, anywhere in the world, at any time of day, and with almost instant availability of funds. Just want to show you those connections. You guys can speculate on your own. Um, but again, these are industry leaders with this group. Ripple, for those of you who do not know, is one of the highest valued private companies to date. It is going to be an absolute industry giant in the world of payments. They are a payments company that utilize blockchain technology. They have a vested interest in XRP. I personally believe, not financial advice, that it will appreciate substantially. They want to keep people out for as long as possible until they're ready to use it. Why else would they move price until they're ready to go? There's no points. They don't need to put enough volume in the payments until they're all ready. Is it kind of an all or nothing? Perhaps. I know Michael Ziszczek was talking about IOP, you know, XRP adoption and all of that. And he was like, well, I'd assume, you know, kind of the 80-20 principle, you kind of get, you know, the top. 20% and they have 80% of the volume. Yeah, but it seems like since it's taking so long and all of these delays have occurred, but there's also no true competitor that has come to be with, you know, to even contend with XRP again on an open level playing field. It doesn't matter if it's Fnality, a utility settlement token. It doesn't matter about Libra. It doesn't matter about any of these groups you're hearing about. What is it? The Ivno project with their, you know, trial tokens for settlement. Yeah, these tokens in these walled gardens can exist. And I think that they'll even serve utility and do good on a permissioned basis, but it's still not going to open up the, you know, and level play, the level playing field and allow true interoperability between all ledgers and networks and groups and ecosystems. So that's just what my belief is. I believe that XRP is positioned for success, and it's more and more likely by the day that it might just be an all-or-nothing thing, where it's going to go for 100% market share when the time comes. Could that be by end of year in the next few years? Perhaps. And I don't want this to be a hype video, but yes, I'm very excited, and it's hard to hide that. And I'm continuing. I want to grow this channel. I want to share this information, and I want to learn with you guys and kind of watch how this all occurs. It's going to be really funny when we see this truly happen and then kind of go back and see where we were right, where we over-speculated, what we completely missed altogether. I'm very, very excited to be on this journey with all of you guys. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we continue to see XRP price move up. I'm personally a sick of, you know, accumulating. I'm ready to get this show on the road. I know many people maybe wanted to go lower to buy more and other people just, you know, want to wake up millionaires. I get it. But everything takes time. So with that, guys, I you know appreciate everybody that stuck around. I've been kind of battling a cold, so sorry if I've been you know coughing and sniffling. I'm sure that's really annoying to listen to. Appreciate your patience. Shout out to Jamie XRP, Mikey, Crypto Beginner, Philip Miles, and all other top channel members. And I will see you in the next video.